talking earlier about uh, the way our money is spent, very much money week this week with the uh, federal budget tomorrow night. I'll be speaking to the Treasurer on Wednesday. Although well, we're still negotiating that. At this stage, he says we're going to have a maximum of seven minutes, seven minutes to examine and question him about a budget. The first time I've spoken to him for a year. However, let's not grizzle. I mentioned the case of Cassie Sainsbury, who is uh, wanting federal government funding for her uh, for, to face the cocaine charges in Colombia. I think she should get it, but that's another one. There's this other example too um, that involves a lot more. In fact, $15 billion a year. Australia is paying welfare each year of up to nearly a million people. It's 800-odd thousand people. $15 billion who are not Australian citizens. Now, some will be long-term residents. That's That's perhaps fair enough, but Nearly a million people, $15 billion being paid out, and they're not Australian citizens. These figures have come from the Parliamentary Budget Office. In fact, it's 870,000 non-citizens getting their $15 billion a year, requested by Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm. Um, we spend $158 billion a year on welfare, you know, $435 million a day. Some people are gaming the system, but not everybody. There are those who get it deservedly. Uh, on the line, the man who requested those figures from the Liberal Democrats, Senator David Lionhelm. Good morning. Good morning. OK, take me through the figures. What do they show you? Well, uh, we are very, very generous to people who are not citizens of, uh, of Australia. Um, my, my feeling is that uh, we are too generous, that uh, if we stopped... Um, paying welfare to people who are not citizens, then we would probably attract a different type of immigrant, uh, those who are more economically beneficial to the country, because they would be uh, they would come here knowing that they weren't going to get welfare, and therefore would make the decision: Well, when am I going to make a go of it or not? So, where, now, where, what country do these the people come from? What countries, uh, rather? Uh, well, um, we've had to rely on the on the PBO for that. But um, uh, quite a lot from the UK, Middle East, um, um, some from New Zealand, although that's a bit of an issue because I think we are a little, a little unkind to New Zealanders and that we, um, uh, we, um, some, we somehow or other manage to um, treat some of them as, uh, as equal to us and then others we don't treat them the same as us. I'm going to get a briefing from immigration on that this week. Yeah. Try and sort that one out. But, um, but n- a number of countries... Um, and uh, we, we, my, my feeling is, our, my party's policy is that uh, you should pay, if you are a skilled migrant, you should pay um, a relatively affordable fee um, to come here. We want skilled migrants, we need them, and we don't want to send them to other countries. So the, the, the visa fee should be relatively affordable. But then um, you shouldn't be able to get welfare until you become a citizen. In, in exceptional circumstances, what? you might... You might change that, but but uh, the general rule is you don't get welfare. Now, the the other category of of, uh, of uh, immigrants is family reunion. Um, our view on those ones is that uh, they should pay a substantial um, visa fee to be able to become permanent residents, and definitely no welfare ex- except you know in rare yeah. rare exceptions. Um, until you become a citizen. Would there not be some in this? I mean, Britain, for example, uh, who might have been living in this country 50 years, paying uh, paying taxes for 50 years, but remained, retained their British citizenship. What about them? Yeah, well, the question is, why wouldn't they become an Australian citizen? Well, but, but previously, previous years, you sort of didn't have to, did you? You were part of the Commonwealth. Mm, yeah. So you might need a transition. You might, need, If you're going to abolish uh, welfare... For non-citizens, you might uh, phase it in over time so that it doesn't necessarily disadvantage people who've made a, a bona fide and, decision. And, and what about the issue of reciprocal rights? If uh, mm. if if you are paying, there, there are some countries, aren't there? If you if you're paying welfare to their people, uh, their, their citizens in this country, then they pay them to our citizens in their yes. country. Yes, that's right. Yes, well, the, the costing of 15 billion didn't allow for those people. There, those those sort of agreements uh, do exist in, and they do cover quite a lot of non-citizens and uh, um, and that that isn't included in the 15 billion this is only 
uh, the existing bid-in only relates to uh, people who don't who come from countries where that arrangement doesn't exist. Okay. Well, from Britain, that exists with Britain, doesn't it? No. Well, sort of. No, there's. I get a steady stream of complaints from uh, from British people who uh, say that um, uh, they're eligible for. Uh, uh, Social Security, as they call it, in the UK, but it's not indexed, or a UK age pension, but it's not indexed, so it's worth about two pounds a week or something like that because it um, hasn't been changed since the time they left the country and uh, the country refuses to um, uh, do okay. anything about it. So, so, so what, the, what, what would you... You would say no welfare for unless you're a citizen, except in exceptional circumstances. That, that, that would be the starting proposition that we would... Uh, 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 we would say yes. So, um, and people coming to Australia. So we're not talking about people who are already here. As I said, some some allowance needs to be made for people who've made a decision in the past. But for people contemplating coming to Australia, I think it's important to um, set the rules. And the rules should be: you won't get any welfare until you become a citizen, um, unless you know you, you fit some of the rare exceptions to that. Um, that doesn't include refugees, of course. And um, and so, therefore, people will make a decision about coming to Australia on the assumption that if they don't uh, get a job and can't support themselves, then they might have to leave. Okay. And, and that I think that would improve the quality of the immigration, or immigrants. would also reassure the public that immigrants are not a drain on our budget. Okay. Um, that they are uh, contributing economic term, in economic terms to the economy. Now, we do need immigrants. We need skilled immigrants in particular for our economy. They are an important contributor yeah. to our growth. We don't want to put them off, but, but not all immigrants are equal. Some are uh, um, not all that valuable, and the ones who come here um, and uh, go on to welfare either immediately or soon after they arrive here, they're no use whatsoever. OK. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Liberal Democrat. Senator David Lionhelm, who's uh, got these figures out of the Parliamentary Budget Office. Yeah. So what it is, the figure is $15 billion a year to 870,000 non-citizens. They're not citizens. They're getting $15 billion a year in welfare, should they? And his argument is you only get it if you are a citizen, apart from exceptional circumstances like a refugee or something like that. But I'd say it's certainly a fair point on family reunion. If, you, if you're applying for and succeeding the family reunion, you shouldn't be coming out here to live on welfare. That should be part of the criteria before it's approved.